I always say this in the kitchen, I'm not always right, I'm just never wrong. Ah, that could have been. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric Z, the owner and chef of 886 and 112, two overrated Taiwanese restaurants in New York City. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make our pretty oddly famous BDSM fried chicken. Stands for brined, deboned, soy, milk, chicken. Nothing else. Recipe is inspired by a dish called dou lu ji, which is commonly found in southern China and also in Taiwan. It's normally served as, like a, as a popcorn chicken. It's the marinade that really makes the difference. As the old saying goes, your dish is only as good as your ingredients. For this dish, we are pretty adamant on using a Chinese pullet. Pullet is a breed of chicken that is leaner in meat, but so much more flavorful, and the fat is yellow. What we're gonna do, oh, my bad. Some guts fell out. This is what a chicken looks like. Oh, more guts fell out. Anyways, <laughs> first thing you gotta do is kind of dislocate the feet just so it's a little more flexible. So we're gonna trim the nails, give it a nice pedicure. It just makes the entire thing more presentable later. Flushing live poultry, raise these pullets, slaughter the birds fresh in the morning and then deliver it to our restaurant in the afternoon. Freshness is the key. Give it a nice gentle press. This will kind of release the chicken from the rib cage. Take off the chicken ass. It's got a lot of fat in it. Some people would think fat has flavor, but I've tried to keep it on before and it's super bitter. And then we're gonna flip it over one line down the spine so we can start splitting open the chicken from its back. Sharp knife, super important. Keep the oysters. The oysters are niblets of dark meat right here. So what we wanna do is kind of carve around it and then now we're going to release the thigh. So my technique is to just pull on the skin and then slowly graze where the meat and the bones meet. Stick your knife in and then twist it a little bit and then it'll release it. And then you gotta find the tendon that's connecting it and then release that. And boom. Now we just gotta separate the wing. This wing bone is going to guide you to where the wing connects. And we just gotta find, again, where the bones meet. It is very important to use a boning knife because it's nimble and it's thin. You can get into the crevices. This way you're guaranteed to have as much meat on the, on the skin as possible. So we have the legs and the wings both separated from the rib cage. What we gotta do now is to decapitate this guy. What you wanna do is just to release the skin. You also wanna release these connective tissues. And this is the fun part, really. And you wanna take your finger Go right into the esophagus, and what you want to do is pull. And the entire chicken head and rib cage comes off, Mortal Kombat style. So now, separate the breast from the rib cage itself. The breast is a concave. It looks like this. You want to bring your knife down with, at an angle like this and at an angle like this. Slowly pull, slowly pull. And what I like to do at the restaurant is I like to keep this cartilage on because it provides like a, a surprise little snap in texture. Take two fingers, press down on the tenders, and then pull. <sighs> Your rib cage. Your breasts are now boneless. What are we doing now? We're doing, oh, we're deboning the, the legs. Follow the bone, this will guide you. Use your fingers and pinch the bones and it'll sort of release itself from the meat as well. You want to also break this skin right here. Release the bone from the flesh and just kind of place your knife below the drum joint and then boom, you samurai that shit. Release, release, and twist and pull. And the final step is to use your kitchen scissors and snip the tendons. Any sort of like silver skinny white things running through the muscle, give it a little cut, a little snip snap. If you don't snip it, when you cook it, the entire chicken is going to kind of like tense up. And the tendons, if they're not disconnected, is going to curl your chicken up like into a ball. And then your starch is gonna steam, and then you're gonna have to throw this chicken away. This chicken gave its life for us to enjoy, so you don't wanna fuck it up. Snip your goddamn tendons. Snip, snip, and you're done. So this is ready to go. We're gonna start making the marinade. We're gonna start off with a red, fermented soybean known as furu. What we're gonna do is loosen it up a little bit like this. Soy milk. This is a soy milk chicken 
Add the soy milk in until it's like nicely incorporated. Beautiful thing about this marinade is it's, it's so universal. I think it would do really well with pork. Vinegar, white distilled vinegar, adds acid, tenderizes the meat. Red vinegar, basically white vinegar with a little molasses. It's a little bit sweeter. It's getting thicker because you added acid to soy milk. It's curling a little bit. So you want to keep stirring and stirring and stirring. This is white pepper. It's not Taiwanese food if there's no white pepper. That's a fact, look it up. Garlic powder, it's not fried chicken without garlic powder. Onion powder, same as the above. Turmeric. Paprika, that light hint of spice. Curry powder, because why not? MSG, use MSG guys. Salt, we have already a lot of salinity from furu, so you don't need a ton of salt. Sugar, it's not Taiwanese food without five spice. Sesame oil, Shaoxing wine, it provides a nice fragrance, subtle notes. Again, cooking is about putting all these building blocks together and building a flavor house. You're welcome. So we have our chicken, the one that we just deboned, right here. Pour it in, pop it in the fridge. At the restaurant, we do a minimum of two days. Batter time, sweet potato starch. American cuisine, at least. Fried chicken is almost mostly used flour. The good thing about flour is it has a lot of protein, so it yields a crispy crust. But the problem with flour is that it has gluten, which if you try to do a wet batter, next thing you know, you have fucking noodles for batter. Soy milk, instead of water, which like the normal Taiwanese recipe uses, we add soy milk. Soy milk has protein. And your block of silken tofu. Silken tofu has the most water content. So for this recipe, we chose silken tofu just so it can moisturize the whole thing a little bit more. It adds more protein. It actually gives the batter a little bit more body and nobody's ever fucking done it, so why not? So all we gotta do, blend it for like 30 seconds. Okay, well incorporated. As you can see, lots of fucking air bubbles. If you use it right now, the batter is gonna fall off of the chicken when you're frying it. You wanna chill it for about five hours. So we are going to make the chive slaw, which is sort of like the garnish that goes with the chicken to refresh your palate. Take off the butts of the scallions. So we have chives, yellow chives, scallion, shallots. While that chars, we're gonna slice our shallots, medium slices. So we're gonna wok hay this motherfucker. So we're gonna torch it, just so it speeds up the process. I always tell people that I got into the restaurant business because my grades sucked and I couldn't get a job. And they're like, ah ha ha, so funny. No, it's true. I was born and raised in Taiwan. Came here, I was like, what the fuck? No Taiwanese food. Cook Taiwanese food, boom, bam, here. I just like cooking, like making food. Adequately charred. All we gotta do is incorporate this, this, into this with that. That's cooking 101. And we're just gonna add our shallots in here. It's not really a lot of shallots. It's just a little. Bean sprouts. Bean sprouts exist in this slaw for the purpose of texture. It'll squirt juice in your mouth. Because we charred it, it's a little bit bitter, so we're gonna need to add a lot of sugar to balance. A little salt for savoriness. Kochugaru, ode to Korea. This is soy sauce, because again, we're Asian. Chili oil, generous amounts of it. This is black vinegar, sesame oil. Simple as that. Seriously so easy. Give it a mix. And because your aliens are really hot, it's gonna help melt the sugar. And so you don't really even have to do much mixing. And ideally we let this sit overnight, but honestly, 30 minutes is fine. So we're gonna make the dusting for the chicken. First things first, salt, sugar, MSG. One to one to one. Turmeric, and we have smoked paprika. Garlic powder, onion powder. White pepper, mix it up. So this is gonna be our BDSM dusting. I'm gonna sneeze and try to hold it in. Oh. I'm good. What we're gonna do now is dry the shit out of the chicken. It's very important. If you don't dry the chicken properly, the batter would not adhere to your chicken as well. Therefore, you will not get a good crust. This chicken's been marinating for like two days. Soak it up real well, every crevice. So this chicken is Pretty well dried. So I'm gonna put this chicken into the mixing bowl and then I'm gonna pour the batter into the mixing bowl. 
tell the texture is really thick. Batter it well. Same like marinating it. You don't want any bald spots because then you'll get bald chicken. The fry temp we do is 350. We fry it for five minutes, take it out, let it rest for two minutes, and then we fry it again for two minutes. You want the crust to form before you agitate it. It'll go from liquid to soft to hard. Right now it's at soft, and if you touch it, you're gonna break the integrity of the, the batter. And part of the reason why we rest it for two minutes is because then we get a chance to separate it. Then your second fry, you're gonna crisp up every single edge that was like stuck to itself. So time's up. We're gonna remove this chicken for its rest. It's not crispy just yet. We're gonna let it sit while it's resting. It's gonna dry out. It's gonna become a little bit crispier. And then we pop it back in. It's gonna crisp up like nothing. So the chicken's been rested and uh, we are ready for our second fry. Going back in. Grizzle gozzle. The sound of water leaving the crust. We're gonna let it fry for another like three minutes or so, and then we're gonna let it rest again. Pretty much ready, we're gonna fish it out. And because the crust is formed, we can feasibly, theoretically, fish it out in one piece with a spider. Pretty crispy, I would say. So we're gonna dust it, very liberal, and just let it kinda sit and chill for another two minutes or so. Rested, dusted. This part right here is the breast, and this is the thigh. So if we slice it horizontally for each slice, we can get both white meat and dark meat. It's nice and juicy. Ooh. So the foot isn't exactly edible. It's there for mostly presentation purposes. If you eat it right now, it's gonna be really stiff, but it looks fucking awesome. Separate the chicken like Moses. This little crevice is where we're gonna stuff the slaw. Be generous. This is gonna keep people coming back. Sesame seeds, a few slices of peppers. Optional, here you got it, BDSM chicken. Ah. Not bad. No, nah, it's pretty good. The chicken though, like you can really taste the flavor of the chicken. And that's the whole point of the recipe, honestly. To let the chicken shine, because this, is well balanced, but it also allows the original flavor of the pullet to come through. Mmm. So good. Ah, it's okay. For the recipe, click below. And come visit me at 86 and Win Win. Cheers. Like I always say in my kitchen, I'm not always right. I'm just never wrong. Hey! <laughs> <laughs>